What is up guys? This is Crayfish Obsession here and today we are going to be talking about the Red Swamp Crayfish. Now, this is going to be a general care guide and an identification guide that will help you greatly in uh, identifying invasive species, which you will likely find in your area, and uh, keeping them and uh, how to provide for them the best you can. Also talking a bit about their behavior and all that good stuff. So let's get right into this. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is where can I find one? How can I get one? Now, this is a pretty simple answer. Uh, a lot of supermarkets, they sell a uh, live crayfish, which will most likely be a red swamp crayfish. Um, the problem with buying them from supermarkets live though is they have been through a lot They might have already been infected with the disease and they usually just don't live as long Because they've been exposed to so many extremes uh, And a lot of the times they're already diseased and they will uh, die pretty quickly uh, but if you do get one don't be discouraged on your part if it dies because a lot of the time It's it has something to do with the crayfish from being in that supermarket being shipped stuff like that They usually just don't last as long the best way you can get them obviously is from an aquarium store You can also catch one, but uh check with your local laws about that um, but usually with a, with a red swamp I'm pretty sure uh, most states want you to take them away from the rivers because they are highly invasive. They're basically everywhere. Uh, yeah, a couple of friends of mine went on a like local government crayfish hunt to get to take red swamps out of rivers. So I'm pretty sure most uh, what if you're not in Louisiana or South Southeast America or northern Mexico. I'm pretty sure most states will be happy with you t removing red claws out of the waters. They're very invasive, and uh, they're they are very powerful. They outcompete most native species, and they're basically everywhere. So let's start with identifying a red swamp crayfish. So first thing you'll notice is that they're red. Surprise, surprise. But they can also go down to dark red very dark red they can almost like blackish and especially when they're under the water and when you're trying to catch them in river water they do look more brown than red you really have to take them out or put them in tank water where it's clear and you can see they're red another thing you will notice is um their claw has a hook and this is kind of unlike any other crayfish it's i it's one of the only things I find to be unique about this species of crayfish is the hook on the claw. Uh, a lot of crayfish, they might have spindly claws, but they're always, uh, they're always straight. And I find this to be very interesting to look at. And it also makes their pinches a bit more painful. So uh, mind that. And you'll see me handling this crayfish, but I do not recommend that. Because if you feed your crayfish well, like I am, and you can see me being really worried, they can be very active, they're very strong, and uh, they're pretty scary, uh, because they like to bolt really fast, and it's jump scare-like. So, But if you're not feeding your crayfish well, it won't be as active. If you get it straight from the supermarket, it also probably won't be as active, so you can handle them a bit. They don't really like being handled. They will not walk on your arm, no matter what you do. Um, and most of the time, they will just try to pinch you straight up. So, I don't advise handling them. So yeah, you'll know that handling is not the best procedure to go by when keeping these crayfish they don't like being handled you probably shouldn't be handling them anyways but i really wanted to show you guys the identification so that's why i ended up handling them here uh f so for the identification there's something called the areola which is uh the the part where the middle of the carapace the top middle where both sides of the carapace meets and that's a great identifying factor for the red swamp and the red swamps have little to no areola it's literally a line it's not even an hourglass and this is because they're very tall and they're very skinny they grow up they grow vertically and not horizontally a lot of crayfish grow wide and thick 
but the red, but the red swamp will usually stay thinner and taller, and this allows them to uh, get in places where a lot of other crayfish uh, can't really get to. And I think that also might be a contributing factor to why they're so successful as an invasive species. These guys are really good at doing what crayfish do. Their hook claws are just better at almost everything. And uh, they just can get into smaller spaces. And I feel, I feel like that's why a lot of the non-native crayfish just cannot compete with these guys. These guys are also super aggressive. They will learn what a human looks like and uh, they can see right through the tank. Now you'll be seeing some footage of the crayfish in its uh, defensive posture with its arms up. That will probably happen a couple of times. Uh, more often or not when it sees you it will just do that gesture um, even through the tank as you can see but uh, they also do it um, when they're outside the tank. So that, that's a little uh, overview on the red swamp crayfish, and now let's talk about uh, how to care for one. So these guys are pretty hardy creatures. Uh, you want a 20 to 30 gallon tank, 20 or up is pretty good. You want a lot of hiding spaces. Uh, you, the fish I have you with them are black nose dace. Uh, these guys are river caught, and... Um, they're really fast, so the crayfish will never really get them. But a rule of thumb is uh, if the crayfish can catch it, it will eat it. Uh, and these guys are pretty aggressive, like I said before. These probably the most aggressive species of crayfish I've ever kept. The red swamps. They're very aggressive. Uh, my current red swamp doesn't really bother with the fish. Because uh, he has tried for one whole week trying to get at least one. But he always failed. And I almost felt sad for him, but uh, he just gave up now. Now he just chills in corners. Uh, when you are uh, caring for them, you want to make sure that you give them a hiding spot. But in, in, in if you want to make, and if you want to, um, if you want to see your crayfish all the time, just put a rock against the glass, and that crayfish will hide there. Uh, he'll be he might be a bit reluctant like uh, my red swamp after the water change I did he doesn't like chilling near the the uh, the play the hidey hole that I gave him and now he chills behind the filter where I can't really see him and I've been trying to discourage him from being there but I mean it really is his decision I'm gonna remove that sponge filter anyway so I can put it in newer aquariums for the bacteria but uh yeah so these guys are pretty aggressive uh, i don't recommend putting your fingers in the tank uh or putting your hands in them at all uh, if you're gonna move stuff around um they will probably go after them they know the difference between a finger and a stick if you put a stick in the tank they won't bite it but uh if you Sorry, somebody called, but if you uh, put like a stick or something in there, they will not pinch it for some reason. Get yeah, some very hard. Another thing you should probably avoid is using a sponge filter. Uh, the reason I have them right now is just so I can get some good bacteria in them and I can put them in some new tank setups to make them cycle faster. But um, that, having sponge filters with crayfish is just a very, very bad idea, especially if you have other. Uh, especially if you have other fish in your tank the problem with this is because the crayfish like to crawl all over the sponge and they like to chew on it too so it's not good for the crayfish and also this will break apart the sponge and have random pieces floating in the air which a lot of times the fish will mistake in for food and that's really bad um, so you don't want to keep it in there long term like, I can see my fish just engulfing that sponge piece floating around and then spinning it back out. Uh, it's not good for the fish, and it's generally not good for your tank. You know, you always want a power filter with these crayfish. They also really like currents. They're always near currents, so uh, that's another thing you want to know. That's also another reason why you don't want a sponge filter. And uh, for feeding, you want to make sure that... Uh, you're giving them a varied diet. Uh, sometimes you can give them lettuce, like broccoli, they'll eat it. 
but uh, it should probably mostly be consisted of um, shrimp pellets. That's what most people like to feed them. Now these guys don't actually get a lot of protein in the wild, but uh, there haven't been really been any problems with giving them a lot of protein. So it, I I think it should be fine. Just make sure if you do have fish, that the uh, the pellets sink to the bottom without fish taking it. Uh, if that if this is happening, uh, I'll be making a tutorial on how to make a uh, direct feeder out of a straw. But uh, this is actually really simple. I'm not even sure if I'll make a tutorial on that. Just get a really long straw. And, and if it's not long enough, just tape a couple together and then stick it in the aquarium and put a single pellet down the straw so then fish can't take it. Uh, that's what I sometimes do if my fish get a bit aggressive for food. And it's not good for the crayfish or the fish as the crayfish starves and the fish are overfed. So it's not good in general. The crayfish will also uh, roam around the tank and if you have gravel, it will clean out the gravel with its... Uh, arms it's very it's a very interesting thing to see and a very interesting thing to wa watch these guys are nocturnal they'll mostly be out during the night but they do sometimes switch uh if if you do put your if you have pellets and not flakes these guys will usually come out during the day too and walk around to eat but if you do have if you are feeding them fish flakes they will wait for the flakes to just sink to the bottom and they'll probably eat them at night. And that's probably what's happening if you don't see them directly eat the, um, eat the flakes. Uh, another thing these guys are, these guys are escape artists. You want a lid. Now, I don't have one personally, but I've blocked basically all escape measures. Um, but a lid is always good and you want to make sure there's no way the crayfish can escape. And you want to make sure you don't have anything tall that the crayfish could uh, move over and uh, use it as a bridge. Also, you don't want to be too worried about aquascaping hills and stuff because these guys will mess it all up if you work hard on it. Uh, no, a, a thing you want to notice is uh, after a couple of days and maybe even a week, there'll be places there'll be places of gravel that'll be higher and places that'll be lower and usually the lower places is where the crayfish likes to eat uh, and that's usually where they go and they just try to get as much food out of the gravel that's also another sign that that part of the gravel is dirty because the crayfish like to just take all the food off the gravel so that's also a good indicator of which parts of the gravel you want to clean first um, and that's also where they like to feed Obviously, and they also like to burrow themselves into the into something when they start to eat and Yeah, so it's it's already like 13 minutes. So um And uh, we'll see you in the next one